remind ourselves this is actually a collection of things, which will be rationals in Q such that the rational is less than the number Q, the rational that I want to uh, represent. Okay? This is clearly a cut. And the claim is this association shows how Q is embedded in the reals. Okay? So here's uh, one thing that, again, I'll ask you to check. It's not hard to do this, that the function that takes rational numbers into the real numbers, which we're thinking of as a cut, uh, as, a, as, as a cuts, that takes little q to little q star. This particular map is, uh, if you took algebra, you would think of it as, a, as an injection of one field into another field. Uh, if you haven't taken algebra, what we're just going to verify is, in fact, these things preserve the field uh, operations and do so in a one-to-one -one way. So um, check that this function preserves plus, times, and order. You can check that pretty easily. Um, what do I mean by that? E.g., you give me a rational. If I add two rationals and I look at their associated cut, I claim it's the same as if you look at the, the cut associated to one plus the cut associated to the other. Okay? Or, for instance, uh, if one rational is less than another, then their associated cuts will be less, one will be less than the other. One will be included in the other. Okay? If you think about this just for a second, you'll see, yes, this is in fact true. Okay? These kinds of properties are true. Okay. Uh, it's also an injection, that is, uh, it, it's one to one. You'll never have two different rationals getting associated to the same cut. Can you see why? Let's take the rational to uh, uh, one and the rational four-fifths, could they be associated to the same cut? No, because the set of things to the left of them is different. One will have more things than the other. Okay, okay so uh, and as an injection is one to one. Okay, okay good. So uh, in fact, R does contain Q as a subfield. Uh, so you can think of then as uh, then Q, I'll call it Q prime, which is basically the set of all Q stars such that Q is in little, little Q is in Q, uh, is a subfield of R. Okay, uh, what I want you to do is step back from this and just appreciate for a second what we've just done. We've defined an object that looks like the real numbers we know and love, which is what that was our goal, right? It sits along a line, it has an order, it has an arithmetic, and some of the things in it behave like the rationals. Okay, and it's defined completely in terms of rationals. A cut is a collection of rationals. Okay? Now, once we start working and uh, uh, elucidating the properties of the real numbers, we'll, we'll, we'll stop thinking of them as collections of rationals, okay? Just like when we work with fractions, we don't think of them as ordered pairs, right? We think of them as fractions, okay? Because we have properties associated with them. But what have we done? We've constructed real numbers. The rationals sit inside in a nice way. Now, some of you may uh, be uh, objecting or at least wondering Wait a minute, what about this, this funny thing we call the square root of 2? So notice this length, which we've called by this funny symbol, it actually sits in this line as what? Well, it's a certain cut. 
Which cut? Well, it's the cut that consists of all rationals such that what? The square is less than 2. Or, just to make sure it's a cut and closed completely to the left, I should probably add what? All the rationals less than 0. OK? So for instance, if I give this cut a name, let's call this cut uh, um, uh, gamma. You can check using the definition of multiplication that, in fact, gamma squared actually will equal 2. Really? What was the definition of multiplication? Well, it looked something like, look at all products, possible products, at least for things that are uh, uh, considered to be positive, all possible products of pairs of things, one from one cut and one from the other, which is in this case the same thing. And is it not the case if you take a bunch of those, you'll get something that basically creeps up on two instead of creeping up on this length? So this creature lives in R, this particular length. OK? Kind of beautiful, right? We, we have. Uh, the square, the, the possibility of solving equations uh, like this one. Okay? And maybe even to drive home this point, um, we can say this a, a different way. See, gamma squared equals 2. Actually, this is, this is 2 star, right? It's the cut that is associated to the rational 2. Okay? Oh, nifty. Very nifty. OK. Um, what have we done? We've shown that R extends Q. We've uh, shown that R is an ordered field. And then the last thing that we wanted to show from the theorem, the big theorem we pointed to last time, theorem 1.19 in your book, is that R has a property that Q doesn't. R has the least upper bound property. And what we saw from last time is we could actually define, uh, uh, or we could actually see what the least upper bound property, uh, least upper bound is for any collection that has an upper bound. And we'll do so in the following way. Let's say uh, A is a collection. A cuts. Those are real numbers, OK? And we wish to take their supremum. And to show that something has the least upper bound property, we want to show that if the set is bounded, then it has a least upper bound, OK? So I'm going to assume that this collection of cuts has an upper bound. So uh, the upper bound here, maybe I'll call it um, beta for bound with upper bound beta. So here's the picture you should have in your head. I've got a whole collection of cuts. And I'm just drawing a bunch of these here. And you're supposed to think of all the, the rationals that lie inside these things. If I have a, a whole collection of cuts, and these are all bounded cuts, they're bounded, let's say, by some beta. OK? Then what is the supremum, or what is the candidate for the supremum here? I claim the supremum exists, so we should come up with a candidate. We said this last time, what the candidate should be. Let's 